Hello and welcome everyone to the fourth and final quarter of 2012. It's going to be October, November, December, and our subject is, for this quarter, Growing in Christ. And uh, I'm here with my good friend and colleague and co-director, Ty Gibson. Ty, nice to have you here. Yeah, it's good to see you, David. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a long time. I mean, I'm sitting in the room here with Ty, and uh, we've not seen one another for... Over a month. More than a month. In fact, we actually got in here into the studio earlier, much earlier, and uh, the plan was to get started early this morning, but we've spent the last two hours just catching up. Just blabbing away, yep. And uh, you can be thankful for that, because if we hadn't done that, then we would just be catching up over the course of this commentary, and you'd say, wow, I wish they'd pay more attention to the commentary rather than just talking about what's new in their lives. So yeah, yeah. it is awesome to be you back. You look great, by the way. You look healthy and alive. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. I, I, you, you look great, too. You're tan. Am I, I tan? I have... You are a little bit. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm tan, which is good for me. Um, my wife, Sue, and her friend, Mitsu, call me Pasty White Boy. Ooh. Pasty White Boy. I don't pasty like Pasty. Pasty White Boy. No, no that doesn't no, work. No, I, I prefer something more like porcelain or luminous. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I actually, I got sunburned severely, David. Oh, really? On my torso Did you have the whole is lobster blistering red and right stuff? now. Not yet. I've been, I've been, do I smell good? I have baby oil. I can't on smell it. you. <laughs> I, can't I have baby you. oil all over it to try to keep it from from peeling. But yeah, no, there's there's uh, got a little bit too much sun. But it's good to be back. It's good to see it's you. It's good to be back here in Oregon. We've still got some sun, or we'll have it for a little while longer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. Great. Ty's been traveling. You've been preaching. Give us the quick rundown, Ty. Since the last, I mean, it's been oh. a long time. Not just since I've seen you, but since the last commentary. We. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we spoke together at the Light Bearers Convocation, which, which was a blast. Awesome this year. Oh, the which, Lord blessed. The whole Gospel of John expository, five on fire preachers moving chapter by chapter through the whole book. It was great. It was awesome. And we just want to recommend that shamelessly. <laughs> uh, promote uh, that. If you have not already heard that, it was it was titled, We Would See Jesus. You can either, I think, purchase it from the website, lightbearers.org, or you can just go download them for free. Yeah. But man, that was awesome. So we had an amazing convocation over the July 4th weekend. And let me just add, if you are not busy next year around the July 4th weekend, we would love to have you come to the Light Bears Convocation. please come. It's awesome. Good fireworks, good fruit, good preaching. (laughs) It's uh, just beautiful. Well, I went went straight from there, David, to the Oregon camp meeting. Okay. And then to Nova Scotia, which was just beautiful. New Scotland, right? Isn't that what it means? Never been there before. It was great. Just enjoyed it thoroughly. Had a camp meeting by the Atlantic Ocean. I've been there in Pugwash. Yeah. Pugwash. Yeah. yeah. Deep water is what it means. Oh, does it? Yeah, okay. Deep water. And then I, I went uh, from there to the ASI convention, straight from there to uh, Loma Linda, where I had a series of meetings at the Campus Hill Church. Just went great. A the lengthy Lord series, like 10 yeah, nights or 10 something. 10 nights. It was a blessing. The Lord Praise is God. just over the top. Is I that had, where you got your sunburn? Yeah. Okay. Sue and I laid Southern by the California. pool a few times. Yeah. So let's see. After the convocation, I went to GYC Europe, which was in Linz, Austria. Almost 2,000 young people there assembled from like 42 or 43 nations. Oh, I wish I could have been there. It was amazing. It was, I went with moderately high expectations and my expectations were absolutely superseded. It was amazing. Hmm. Exceeded, I should say. Um, And then I've spent about the last three weeks just doing backpacking, Climbing, camping, fishing with the kids. It's been awesome. But yeah, I didn't get yeah. sunburned like you. No, I should have been careful. And we're coming up. The reason that we're back here together now in Oregon after having spent most of the summer preaching is that the Arise program is fixing to start within a week. Yeah. Our 10th right ever Arise program. And um, I better not even open this can of worms too much because we'll spend the rest of the time talking about it. But I can say that we have completely reformulated, rethought, reconfigured the Arise program, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. In and a we, narrative, storyline format. That's right. Whole great controversy start to finish, Genesis to Revelation. It's going to be powerful. Which leads us very nicely, segues us gr- very nicely, perfectly, mm. into what we're talking about this quarter, because you said the whole great controversy yes. narrative, and Ty, our, the title of our lesson is Growing in Christ, which, amen, 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 but it's set against a backdrop. Mm-hmm. Talk to us about that. Well, the, the introduction to this quarter's lesson 
goes out of its way to call our attention to the fact that this quarter we'll be dealing with certain of the 28 fundamental beliefs of Seventh-day Adventists, but in the specific context against the, the backdrop of the great controversy okay. between Christ and Satan. Uh, the introduction to the lesson opens with this line, which I think is, is just so insightful and simple. Everyone believes something. something. And then the introduction goes on to call our attention to the fact that not only does everybody believe something, David, but people's beliefs impact how they live, how their lives are shaped, and mm -hmm. the, the course of their existence is shaped by what they believe. Then the introduction simply points our attention to the fact that Seventh-day Adventists believe something. Well, what do we believe? Well, we have what we call the 28 fundamental beliefs, okay. but those 28 fundamental beliefs are really a series of doctrinal windows into oh, I like that. the great controversy and the character of God as the central feature of the great controversy. Now, Ty, let me just quickly ask a question here, just so that we're not using language that we assume everyone understands, but maybe they don't. So let's just quickly define what do we mean when we say great controversy? What are synonyms? What else could we be saying? Cosmic conflict. We believe that the Bible portrays a battle, a spiritual battle, with an intersection of two realms, the heavenly realm and the earthly realm. Okay. We believe that there is a battle going on between good and evil, and that there are good forces and okay. evil forces that are as real as we are, that intersect with human affairs. And that great controversy has been unfolding since before sin entered our world with the fall of Lucifer and the defection of one third of the angels with him. And since then, this, this controversy, this warfare has been ensuing. It's called the great controversy uh, because it is the war behind all wars, all mm. human woes. I love the way you say that, that these doctrines, these 28 fundamental beliefs, we're going to talk more about that idea, that concept of fundamental beliefs in our first lesson. But I love the way that you say that they're windows. They're not just isolated, independent, unrelated right. mm -hmm. little pieces of knowledge. They're windows into a bigger thing. That's right. When you said that, I don't know if this is a good illustration or not, but what came into my mind was an aquarium. You've been to those aquariums that, you know, you, you can walk up and sort of look through these little portal windows and you yeah. might see a barracuda or a shark or a sea anemone or a tuna or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you can walk over here to this one and you see it from a slightly different angle. Same aquarium. Mm but you're seeing it from a different perspective, from a different place. The right. content is always the same, the aquarium, right. the conflict. But, for example, in the context of our doctrines, we look at it through the sanctuary window. And mm -hmm. then we might walk over here and look at it through the nature of man or the state of the dead window. And then we walk over here and look at it through the Sabbath window. What I'm hearing you say, and what I'm hearing the lesson say is, is that one of the great unifying themes of Scripture is maybe the great unifying theme of Scripture, apart from God and who He is, which really, that's part of this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is the great controversy. Yeah, yeah. Because the great controversy, David, isn't so much a battle of physical might. Okay. It's a battle of ideas and concepts. It's a battle of beliefs, basically. It's, it's, it's on the evil side of the great controversy, a series of lies that are formulated to misrepresent the character of God and to produce mistrust and rebellion against God. And on the good side of the great controversy, led by Christ as the primary spokesperson and revealer of God's character, there is the truth that, that disputes the claims that are being made mm. on the evil side of the great controversy. That's so, awesome. so the great controversy really is a can we say this? It's a theological battle. It's a doctrinal battle. Although those words are, are a little sterile for most people's taste, it is a battle of, of ideas. ideas. That brings to mind, of course, Revelation chapter 12 there, where it says, and war broke out in heaven, Revelation 12, verse 7, mm -hmm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. And the word there, war, is polemos, right. from which we derive the word polemic, which right. means to argue. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we, we're not denying here that there is a physical component. Well, certainly there is okay. a physical component. But behind it, right. there's an ideological war, yeah, a yeah. philosophical war. Right. There is a war of ideas that's taking a place. A war of pictures. A war of pictures Ooh. of ideas 
that portray God in one of two ways. God is either like that or he's like right. that. Interestingly enough, you called our attention to Revelation chapter 12, where it says war broke out, polemos, or politics erupted in heaven, argument broke out in heaven. It says Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Well, you have to ask yourself the question, what, what, what's the nature of this fighting? Are, is it laser beams? Is, it, is, there, is there flame okay. coming out of their fingertips? Are, okay. they, are they wrestling in mid-space? Well, the word polemos calls our attention to the fact that it's argument that's taking place. Mm -hmm. so, so it's debate. It's, it's debate, basically. It's ideas warring against one another. God is being misrepresented, and he's being represented. And we believe, you believe, I believe, you've dedicated your life to preaching, I've dedicated my life to preaching, the fact that the Seventh-day Adventist message is the best explanation that we have come across as yet as to who and what God is in the context of this great controversy. Exactly. And that's why the 28 fundamental beliefs, David, aren't isolated, free-floating, factual items. They're a cohesive mm -hmm. body Brilliant. of ideas that communicate the character of God with unprecedented clarity in any theological system the world has ever seen. And that's not that's a, a bold claim. Yeah, it's, not a, it's not a statement of, of theological or ecclesiastical arrogance. Neither of us were raised in this thing called Seventh-day Adventism. Mm -hmm. I can take it or leave it. It needs to be worth something. Well, it's worth a lot to me. It's worth a lot because it is a system of belief that communicates essentially that God is love, selfless, other-centered, self-giving, self-sacrificing love, and each of those doctrines magnifies some dimension, some aspect of the character of God, and thereby vindicates, exonerates the character of God against Satan's claims. Beautiful. So yeah. this is a whole lot more than just a cultural attachment mm. for you. Oh, it's absolutely. not like saying, oh, I'm an Italian, or I'm a Catholic, or I'm a Hispanic, or I'm a Puerto mm. Rican. This is a, an intellectual, well-thought, analyzed decision that you have made, that I have made, that we want our listeners to make. Mm -hmm. Many of you, of course, already have made. But what we're going to be studying this quarter is some of those windows. Obviously, there's only, what, 15 or 13 lessons, 15 including the introduction and the conclusion. So we're not going to be able to go through all 28. That's a mathematical impossibility. But we are going to be honing in on many of those that really mm -hmm. are crystallized in the Great Controversy motif. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, of course, the lesson title nails it, Growing in Christ. It's not just all about intellectual or cerebral advancement, uh, though there certainly is that. It's about an experiential, individual, personal growth into Christ-likeness and in love with Christ. Amen. So, uh, Ty, that's our introduction. It's yeah. great to be back I'm here forward to it. at the... International Lightbearers Headquarters uh, yeah. <laughs> with you. Hey, by the way, we're in our little uh, soundproof studio. I know. Nice. I wish you all could see where we're at. This is a brand new room that has been uh, built, created, fashioned by our good friend and dean at uh, Rise, uh, Matt Minicus, and Josie, his wife, mm -hmm. uh, helped, him, helped him. And uh, by the way, if you don't have his music, we want to encourage you to get your hands on his music. It's available uh, either, I think, on his website, mattminicus.com, or iTunes beautiful Christian music. Mm -hmm. And so if the sound is better in this commentary than it's ever been before... Thank um, you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. So uh, our first lesson we're going to be getting into here in just a bit is a lot of what we've been talking about already. It's titled The Great Controversy, The Foundation. We're glad you're here. It's going to be a great quarter and a great study.